Hi there, thanks for joining me for this last video as we go through the attributes of God. We've done six so far, and the last attribute of God is that he is one, otherwise known as the unity of God. And I call this video, How Can We Prove That There Is Only One God? And I say that, but proving something is very difficult because some people are just not going to believe even if you give good evidence of it uh, they just may not have the virtue of faith they may not uh, for whatever reason be able to believe but at least i'm going to show you in this video how saint thomas aquinas explains in three different ways that there really can only be one god i find his uh, points pretty convincing and you can let me know if you do as well and as always i'll explain it in as easy of a way as possible to try to make it as understandable to as many people as possibly can. This is question number 11 in the Summa, that God is one. And again, the seven attributes in a row that he goes through from question three to question 11 with a couple of questions in between uh, related to goodness in general and things like that. Uh, so let's get straight to it. And the first way that he's going to explain it will be best explained if you understand this concept. This is a bird, <laughs> right? Now, this bird has bird nature, but it also is what St. Thomas would call a suppositum, which means it's this individual particular bird that we're seeing. It's a beautiful bird, isn't it? But I think most people would agree that this particular bird is unrepeatable. There will never be this bird again in the world, right? You're never going to see this exact bird. So keep that in mind because this bird is not this bird. Although they share a nature, they both have bird nature, right? But they're not the same bird. And you got to understand that distinction in order to understand Thomas's first proof, so to speak, for the unity of God or that there is only one God. And just to further drive in the point, there's another bird. <laughs> OK, so we have three birds represented here, but one nature and the nature of birdness. They all fly. They've got wings. They have beaks. Right. Um, all the, the qualities that a bird would have, they share. OK, so why am I explaining all this about a bird? Well, this is Thomas's first proof for the unity of God. Not not birds, but here's how it goes. He said first from, from his simplicity. Remember, that was the first of his attributes. For it is manifest that the reason why any singular thing is this particular thing is because it cannot be communicated to many. OK, that bird cannot be communicated that same bird to some other creature because there's only of one that one bird right since thereby Socrates is a man and here's a picture of Socrates can be communicated to many okay so Socrates humanity is communicable to you and me and everybody else that's a human being you know billions and billions of people share the same nature as Socrates but none of us are Socrates okay that aspect of him the particular suppositum or person, Socrates, is unrepeatable. I think everybody would agree with that, right? Uh, whereas what makes him this particular man is communicable only to one. Therefore, if Socrates were a man, by what makes him to be this particular man, as there cannot be many Socrates, so there could not be in, in that way many men. All right, so if Socrates was the only person that had human nature, and that, that was it, and it was unique to him, then there could only be one human being because it would not be communicable uh, to others. Now, this belongs to God alone, for God himself is his own nature. Therefore, in the very same way God is God and he is this God, impossible it is, therefore, that many gods should exist. OK, some people may say, well, to believe this, you got to believe his simplicity. So it's kind of circular. And I was, if I wasn't convinced that he's simple, then I'm not going to believe this one. OK, that's fair enough. But let's go on to the second reason. OK, secondly, this is proved from the infinity of his perfection. God comprehends in himself the whole perfection of being. OK, now, again, he's going back to the second attribute of God, that he's perfect and that in him exists, pre-exists the perfection of all the creatures. I think we probably would have to agree that in order for us to experience perfection, there has to be some ultimate perfection through, by which all perfections are 
perfect, right? That was the argument in the second attribute of God, right? Okay, if then many gods existed, they would necessarily differ from each other. Something, therefore, would belong to one which did not belong to another. And if this were a privation, one of them would not be absolutely perfect. All right, here's an example. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that this is the perfect butterfly. Okay, there's never been a better butterfly than this butterfly right here. All right, and then you said, okay, this is also a perfect butterfly. Well, then you'd say, well, is perfection orange or is perfection more of that kind of, you know, turquoise color or whatever, okay, because they're different. So since they're different, they can't both be perfect, right? One of them has to be a little bit better than the other because they're not identical. And so this argument says, well, if there were two gods, one of them wouldn't be as perfect as the other because they would have to be kind of different, all right? The third reason is shown from the unity of the world. For all things that exist are seen to be ordered to each other since some serve others, but things that are diverse do not harmonize in the same order unless they are ordered thereby to one. I'm going to go back to something I explained earlier uh, in a previous video is that the world is ordered and we see this every day that things come together and there is a beautiful order in the world. For example, I mentioned the composting process where, you know, there, there's a process whereby things that would otherwise be just waste, like leaves and eggshells and watermelon rinds, turn into this beautiful fertile soil. Okay, that, that doesn't just happen by accident. Things come together to make that happen. All right, what about the photosynthesis process? Fascinating, where the sun and the moisture and the water and the air and the carbon dioxide all come together for the common good so that man can have oxygen and the plant have carbon dioxide and sugar. And then what about the water cycle? All right, we have evaporation and precipitation and the feeding of the grass and the trees. And, you know, these are the kind of things that if we just stop and pay attention to in the world, we say, you know what, I, th this doesn't seem random. This seems ordered and it seems to all make sense. And so Thomas is saying it seems to be ordered to something and it can't be ordered to more than one because more than one might not agree on things and <laughs> you'd have disagreement. And so there's one being that is keeping all this in order. Okay, are you convinced that these are good reasons to explain the uh, the fact that there is only one God, I think they're pretty convincing. Uh, go ahead and comment and like and share, and let's keep the conversation going. So thank you very much. This concludes our attributes of God, and we'll be moving into the next video very soon. Thank you for watching.